How are you doing? Good. All right. Well, as I'm sure you all know John, and you're probably thinking a couple questions right now, one being, who is this kid? What is he holding in his hand? And what's for lunch? <laughs> so I can answer probably about two of those because I'm thinking about the third one myself. <laughs> Here, I hold something pretty special to me. Inside here was an old hair dryer. I put a couple batteries in here, some aluminum foil, a light bulb, and I rewired it to light up when I push this button. Oh, yeah, it's a little flashlight. <laughs> I call it the flashlight of the future. Future, future, future. <laughs> no, 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 but seriously, Seriously, um, I made the original one when I was about 10 years old, about 11 years ago. And unfortunately, I brought it to school one day and my teacher said, throw it away, it's a distraction. Okay, I did it. Unfortunately for me at that age, I had no idea that in universities and labs across the country that that distraction would be considered something like electrical engineering. <laughs> Big mistake. I mean. My name is Macalvin Romaine, and when I was a younger kid, 10 years old, I took everything apart from stereos to remote control cars. But I had no idea that people did those type of things as their job. Growing up, I saw African Americans excelling in things such as athletics and entertainment, and couldn't envision myself excelling in something as math and science related. No way. I was terrible at science and math, and considered those to be absolutely something I did not want to touch. But luckily for me, now I'm in a different place. I'm entering my senior year in Boston College, majoring in information systems and communications, setting myself up for jobs I didn't even know existed growing up. I run my own multimedia business, Swag Media Entertainment, and I am a technical intern in Fidelity's Investments for the past two years. And hope, this coming May when I graduate to land a job. Hopefully, <laughs> learning, making some money, and uh, if anybody here wants to help, you can see me after lunch, you know. <laughs> It's on you though, because I mean, I am a college student, so. <laughs> but uh, enough about me. This story about how that 10-year-old kid got to be standing here before you today is a story about education. Not traditional education that we're all accustomed to, but something greater. So what helped me? What happened to change my course? My name's John Werner. I'm the Chief Mobilizing Officer at Citizen Schools, an organization we started 15 years ago. I've known McAlvin for a number of years. Through his story, I want to challenge us all to be revolutionary. By way too many measures, the United States is falling way behind. Um, the down arrows, they represent today's ninth graders. 30% will not graduate in this country this year. And the picture's much worse in urban districts. If you do the math, that's 7,000 students will drop out of high school today. The arrows going up represent the 30 top industrial countries. All of them, except for one, for the past few decades have increased the percentage of high school and college graduates. We're the one. At a time when jobs need higher learning, our education system is stuck in neutral, and in some places, in the mud, in reverse. Now, experts are arguing about what the right solution is. But behind the statistics, behind these buzzwords, are children whose passions were never ignited, students whose hair dryers were thrown away, whose potential... <laughs> these are not bad kids, these are bored kids. I knew a student so bored in school, he competed with his peers to see if he could get the most Fs, and he won. Now, this problem is based on a system that's built around efficiency, teaching all students in similar ways in the same spaces. We're sending our students to a box where our teachers educate in a closed system. When I first started teaching years ago, a veteran teacher pulled me aside and he said, John, I want to help you out. You see the neighborhood outside the school? We gauge success by how well we keep that out of here. And I thought that was strange. I looked at the neighborhood, I saw adults that could be part of education. 
I saw opportunities that kids could be woven into and help solve problems. I saw culture to be celebrated. I saw opportunities to be entrepreneurial and innovative. But in that school, that teacher was saying, we're leaving those resources on the table. Now, I think I have an answer, a secret ingredient to education, to our problems. And it's not some guy from Krypton, Superman saving the day. It's all of us. What if the secret ingredient missing in education is us? What if we channeled our skills, our passions, to help change the game of education? Now, 15 years ago, we started Citizen Schools. Eric Schwartz, our CEO, is right here. And it was based on the idea that if everyone could educate, we could educate every student. So here is Alan. Alan is also in the audience right now. He's a very successful Google engineer. He and his team taught a team of middle schoolers like a McAlvin to program Android apps. They created an application where you can go to a store and figure out what clothes to wear, what you look good in. Alan's team loved it. The students loved it. It was great. Jolie's team taught students to do opening and closing and cross-examinations before a federal judge on bioethics, on intellectual property issues. And the parent and guardians were so proud, they went out and bought briefcases for their future lawyers. <laughs> that's debatable about whether that's a good thing or not. <laughs> Here's a subway station not too far from here. A young teen was shot and killed outside of it. So Brandon and a number of architects and 15 other architecture firms organized a competition for the students in the neighborhood to reimagine this station, making it greener, not the color green, and incorporating a memorial to this lost, lost team. The students presented their models to the mayor, and those adults helped take the good, the bad, and the sad from the community and make it into learning opportunities. Now, those three folks may seem like outliers. Those three folks, their friends, their colleagues, they're revolutionaries. They are a second shift of educators. They're, they're changing the denominator of who teaches. They are part of a revolution. They're not professional teachers. They're teaching from the textbooks of their lives, bringing fun, rigor, and relevance. They're using the city as a classroom. And our staff, many AmeriCorps volunteers, are helping them uh, they're helping to recruit them, support them, remind them what it means to work with uh, middle schoolers. And they're having fun all the time. Um, and they're complimenting what's going on in the school day. Now you may say, is this scalable? Are those three outliers? Could all of us do that? Well, did you know that eight million of us did jury duty this year? Now, students go on field trips. McAlvin, you probably went on a few field trips. I'm a, I'm a dad of three. I'm on the sideline of youth soccer often. Did you know that there are 900,000 youth soccer coaches in America today? What if, instead of students taking a few field trips, 900,000 artists, architects, retirees, all of us took field trips to students? In the last 10 years, we've changed a lot of routines, some better than others, in recycling paper and plastic. Didn't look like it's going so well in the Pacific. What if the next decade, we do education duty. And I think for some, it will be more fun than jury duty. Now, we've done this for 15 years. We've worked with 20,000 adults. We call them citizen teachers. They say this is one of the most meaningful things they've ever done. They're making a difference. If you look out, the students who are in our program here in Boston, they're graduating from high school at twice the rate of uh, their district peers. So let's take one sector, one industry, scientists and engineers. In America, there are 9 million, but there are only 110 science teachers for middle schools and high schools. If we took just 2% of the scientists and engineers and combined them with the current science teachers, we would more than double the number of caring adults making a difference. We can do that for every single profession, every single field, and every single McAlvin. We can educate every child if everyone becomes an educator. Let's open up our businesses, our laboratories, our gardens. Let's give the kids the tools, our binoculars, our cameras, our microscopes, and have them see a destination, glimpse it, so they can figure out how to chart a path there. 
Let's open that box of education for McAlvins. Right now, there are millions of kids across the country sitting in classrooms like the ones I remember, getting the same message that the things that they're interested in have no correlation to the things that they're learning in class. That's a problem. And although that may be a problem, all of you before me and everyone watching are the answers. So the things that you do day to day that you consider mundane, share them with the kid. They may consider those things magical. And when I establish myself and get my own career, I plan to do the same. And I plan to get my colleagues and friends involved as well. Only with that kind of movement can we get kids striving to achieve and let them reach their potential. CEOs and senior leaders of America, I'm talking to you too. We know you're busy, got your Blackberries and your meetings. We know. But you can also help. We all can be connectors. So today, as I stand before you, and I look at this, this piece of artwork, <laughs> I don't see something that's going to give the iPhone a run for its money, although mine still works no matter how you hold it. <laughs> but I do see a symbol, a symbol of what today's children are capable of. So if we work together, we can illuminate every child's mind. And I still think this flashlight has some potential. <laughs> Thank you. Woo! That was excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.